overlooking downtown Phoenix. From the Faith Talk Studios in the Camelback Towers, it's the Dustin Daniels Show, where God, sex, and current events are explored from a Christian perspective. Here's your host, Dustin Daniels. one 855 dustin That's one 855 538 Seven eight four six. If you would like to chat, you can also drop me an email at DustinDanielsRadio.com. Follow me on Twitter at Purity Pastor. And we have some brand new immersion workshop dates for you in June, July, and August. June 17th and 18th. July 15th and 16th, along with August 19th and 20th. What is Immersion, you ask? Well, it is a two-day men's workshop for those struggling with sexual purity and sexual integrity. And this is a two-day event, and we will literally immerse you in Scripture, in worship, and in community. This really is a starting point for those of us learning to live a life in sexual integrity, learning to live a life in the light and not in the darkness. And and really, this two-day workshop is all about Romans 7. It's why do I keep doing the things that I don't want to do? And once again, you can find some more information on that. All you have to do is go to DustinDanielsRadio.com. Well, last week we started a discussion, actually a question, a question from Christopher from Mesa. He, he writes... Dustin, my my pastor, he mentioned that Samson could have been a sex addict. What do you think? Well, first and foremost, I think this is a great question because Samson, once again, he's a fascinating prophet that we can read about in Judges 16. And there are so many life lessons that we can learn from Samson. So many things that that apply to our lives, so many things that <laughs> that we can learn not to do, right? And once again, when we think of Samson, most of us think strength, because God gave him unbelievable strength. But then we also think about his downfall, and uh, Samson's downfall was his lack of self-control, specifically in the area of women. Sexual integrity was a big, big problem for Samson. So, is Samson a sex addict? Well, let's read the text. Let's open up God's Word and and find out. And we're going to start in Judges 16. I'm going to read through this scripture and and have some commentary as we go through this. So, starting in verse 1, we started last week in verse 1. One day, Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza. He spent the night with a prostitute. Now, is Samson supposed to be in Gaza with a prostitute at this moment? Because he doesn't live in Gaza. He went to Gaza. See, Samson lived in Zorah, which is probably 50 miles or so away from home. So Samson is walking. He's walking 50 miles to spend the night with a prostitute. It's, it's kind of like us going to Vegas, right? Except here in Phoenix, we can just take a 45-minute flight. <laughs> so if we jump down to, to verse 7, Samson replies, basically Delilah's like, hey, wh- how, how can I tie you up? How can, what's the source of your strength? And Samson replies, you know, if I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not been dried, I would become as weak as anyone else. Now, a bowstring is a animal tendon, and the problem with this game that Samson is now playing is the very fact that he's a Nazarite, and Nazarites, there, there's a couple things that they're not supposed to do. You may be familiar, he's not supposed to cut his hair, but he's also not supposed to touch dead bodies, so he's playing with fire here. So verse 8, the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings. And she tied Samson up with them, and she had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of her house. And she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Now, now pause for a moment. If, if someone is hiding in another room in the house, <laughs> don't you think, I don't know, 
just a possibility that you would get a feeling, like some type of intuition, that there's some something's wrong in the house. There's other people in the house. Something doesn't feel right. But see, Samson, he couldn't he couldn't understand that. He didn't sense that because he was drunk with lust. And when you're drunk with lust, you don't see those things. You don't feel those things. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it's burned by fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. In verse 10, afterward, Delilah said to him, Samson, you've been making fun of me. You've been telling me lies. So now tell me how you can be tied up securely. Now, this is opportunity number two for Samson. And, and, and listen, listen to this, write this down. I heard a pastor say this years ago, and I've, I've repeated it hundreds of times. Sin, especially sexual sin, it just makes you stupid. <laughs> it's just, this is opportunity number two. She's asking the same question. This is deja vu. How was Samson not asking questions to Delilah at this point? You know, isn't it time that we should have a little chat about our relationship? <laughs> How about those Philistine assassins hanging out in the other room? Hey, Delilah, do you have any idea how they how they got in there? Well, Samson replied, he's still playing the game. So he replies, if I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used, I would become as weak as anyone else. See, the game continues. He's funny. Well, at least he thinks he's funny. He's a comedian, right? See, he's so drunk with lust right now that he can't get hurt. So Delilah took new ropes and she tied him up once again. The interesting thing is how is Delilah able to tie up Samson again and again and again? And, and think about this. Is he asleep? Why did he fall asleep again? Is this some type of binge for Samson and he, he just falls asleep afterward? You know, the, the men were hiding in the inner room as before. And again, Delilah, she cries out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. And again, Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as, as if they were a thread. And once again, Delilah, you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. And you got to tell me how you can be tied up securely. So this is opportunity number three for Samson to get out of the house. This is opportunity number three to confess sin. This is opportunity number three to flee, to repent. I mean, don't you just want to scream when you read this? You want to, you want to put your arms around on his shoulders and shake him and just go, wake up, what are you doing? You're going to ruin your life. So how many other godly men did Samson have around him? I mean, where were his friends? We talk about the opportunity to move from isolation into community. Because when you're in isolation, all you do is you just continue to sin. But when you're in community, you, you, you break those bonds. You break the bondage. But we see that Samson didn't have any friends. We see that he did not get any counsel before he started this relationship with Delilah, who is simply a prostitute. And the other question is, why is he so alone? He's alone because sexual sin forces you into isolation. If you're involved in pornography and sexual sin or adultery or multiple affairs, you're going to strip clubs, you're, you do these things alone because that's what you do when you're in the dark. And sexual sin forces you into isolation. And you're not in community. And the problem with isolation is that when you're in isolation for a period of time, you start to get depressed. When you get depressed, it leads to depression. And depression ultimately will lead you to spiritual, emotional death, which is not a very good thing. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23, the, um, James 1 talks about desire when it is fully grown uh, gives birth to death. But look what, look what Samson does here. 
in Judges 16, 13, he says, If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I would become as weak as, as everyone else. So while Delilah slept, or while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric, and she tightened it with the loom shuttle. And again, she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson woke up, he pulled back the loom shuttle and yanked his hair away from the fabric. Now, what's going on here? Keep in mind that the hair, that Samson's hair is the source of his strength. And now he's really playing with fire. It's one of those things to where his hair is literally in the hands of a Philistine prostitute. Not just a prostitute, but a Philistine prostitute. And when you hear the, the word Philistine, automatically think enemies of God. So you've got the source of his strength in her hands. And now she is weaving his hair into this shuttle which is this large device made to, to make fabric. So when he stands up, he literally has this big wooden device attached to his head. I mean, think of the drama. <laughs> it's crazy. It's cr and this whole thing is dramatic. And when you are wrapped up in sexual sin, your life becomes dramatic. When you're looking at pornography, it becomes dramatic and sinful and weird because you're alone and you're isolated and you have no friends and you start doing some really, really stupid things. Christopher from Mesa, Arizona wanted to know if Samson, this awesome prophet of Almighty God, could have been a sex addict. And we're finishing up Judges 16 today as we read through to find out, is it possible? Can you be a man of God and also be a sex addict? You're listening to The Dustin Daniel Show. Mental health is a massively important issue that is sadly minimalized or ignored by the church. If you or someone you love is suffering from an addiction or a mental illness, there is hope. Join Calvary Community Church on Saturday, May 14th, starting at 8 a.m. for Hope Not Shame, a mental health seminar with the goal of providing help and resources to those who are suffering from addictions or mental illness, as well as their family and friends. Pre-register today at calvaryphx.com slash hope. Hey, this is Joe Dallas, author of When Homosexuality Hits Home, and you're listening to The Dustin Daniels Show. Why, thank you, Joe. And if you missed those interviews with Joe Dallas, interviews dealing with homosexuality and same-sex attraction and what, how the church responds and how the culture responds, man, let me encourage you to jump on the website and listen to those interviews. Two of the most listened to interviews that we did last year with Joe Dallas. And by the way, this is a, a radio outreach ministry of seven places. And we are on the air because of your financial support. So thank you to all of our Purity partners. And if this radio program has helped you, I would ask that you please help us. Become a Purity partner with us. It's a dollar a day, $30 per month. Very easy to do so. You can simply, it's a one-time set it and forget it type thing. Go to the website at DustinDanielsRadio.com. Click on the donate button or you can text 7 places to 77977. Christopher from Mesa, Arizona wants to know, is it possible? Is there any way that Samson, this prophet of God, could be a sex addict as well? So we're reading through the story of Samson in Judges 16. And we're to the part now to where Delilah, this prostitute, who is being paid by Philistine rulers, about $90,000, uh, what it would be in today's monies, says, hey, Samson, how can you tell me that I love you? We're in, in verse 15 here. How can you tell me that you that I love you when you don't share all of your secrets with me. See the manipulation there? You've, you've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me. 
You still haven't told me what makes you so strong. Now, this is interesting because this is the first time in the text that we see that Samson is in love with Delilah. But see, does it say that Delilah was in love with Samson? And the other question here is, what is love? What is the biblical definition of love? And if we look at 1 John 4, 8 and 1 Corinthians 13, we, we see what God is or what love is, and, and God is love. And 1 Corinthians 13 is some of the fruit, some of the actions that uh, contribute to love. But you know what? In verse 16, we see that Delilah tormented him with her nagging day after day after day, and, and he just got sick of it. And keep in mind, this is opportunity number four for Samson. What happens when someone nags us and just wears us down? Are we going to stand up and stand our ground and do the right thing? It's interesting in Proverbs 21.9, um, it's better to live alone in the corner of an addict than with a quarrelsome wife and a lovely home. <laughs> And if you can still hear the quarrelsome wife, you can put quarrelsome husband in there too. If you can still hear them in the attic, all you have to do is go down 10 verses to Proverbs 21, 19. It's better to live alone in the desert than with a quarrelsome, complaining wife or husband. And in verse 17 of Judges, Judges 16, verse 17, finally Samson shared his secret with her. Now this is important. Because as we read this verse, we see his tone change. And we can also see Samson's countenance change. He's wore out. He is tired. He says, all right, my hair has never been cut. And I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me. And I would become as weak as everybody else. So Delilah realized that he had finally told her the truth. The ESV says he has told me all of his heart. So so she sends for the Philistine rulers. And she tells them, she says, you know what? Come back one more time. He's finally told me a secret. So they come back with money in their hands. And Delilah lulled. She soothed. She calmed. She tempted Samson to, to sleep with his head in her lap. And then she calls this guy, who once again is in her house, to shave off seven locks of his hair. And in this way, she began to bring him down. And you know what? His strength left him. In verse 20, Delilah cries out, Samson, this is, this is how many times now? She cries out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But see, he woke up and he thought... He thought that I will do as before, and I'm going to shake myself free. But he didn't realize that the Lord had left him. See, he thought he could fix this on his own as he did before. He thought he could and would, in his sin, still be a prophet of God. Proverbs 16, 18 tells us, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. See, he didn't realize that the Lord had left him. How sad. How sad is that? The Lord left Samson. He departed from him. Basically, the Lord allowed Samson to try and fix his own problem. Wow. How many of you listening are trying to fix your own problem, your own pornography problem, your own sexual sin problem, your secret that nobody else knows, how many of you are trying to fix that problem right now within your own strength? And see, Samson is known for his strength. But the reality is, it wasn't his strength, was it? It was the Lord's strength. And this verse is showing us that when the Lord departed from Samson... Man, when we start working in our own strength, especially when it comes to sexual sin, we're, we're going to fall every single time. And now we see the consequences of sin. Uh-oh. We realize this is not a game anymore. This is not fun anymore. 
And there comes a time when the season of sin is over. And the pain that he was causing and the, and the pain that he would have to now endure because sin has consequences. What are some of those consequences for, for Samson? In verse 21, the Philistines captured him and they gouged out his eyes. And they took him to Gaza where he was bound with bronze chains and he, forced, he was forced to grind grain in the prison. Now, keep in mind, when we first started this story, he went to Gaza willingly to sleep with a prostitute. And now he has both of his eyes gouged out and he's being led where he doesn't want to go. It's interesting when you look at the whole counsel of God, Matthew 6, 22, talking about eyes. And Jesus says, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, if you're looking at pornography, if you're filling your eyes up with sin, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, well, how great is that darkness? Matthew 5, 28, I, I say to you that anyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Most of us have heard that verse. The problem with the verse, though, is that we don't really believe it, do we? And then Jesus says something totally weird. It, he says, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it's better that you lose one of your members that your whole body will be thrown into hell. What's he saying? He, he's being hyperbolic there. He's saying, this is this serious to take drastic action, to do something that you've never done before. You know, some of the, the lessons from Samson, some of the takeaways here, and not that I'm going to answer your question, Christopher, I'll, I'll let you come to the conclusion on, on whether or not Samson was a sex addict. But the reality is that Samson was in, was in a, a physical prison, because he's now a prisoner. See, he's a slave in the hands of God's enemies, the Philistines. Samson was destined for greatness. And so are you. Samson was ordained by Almighty God to begin the freeing Israel from the Philistines. But because of his sexual sin, he is himself now a slave to that very nation that he was supposed to destroy. When we read the story, this guy was ordained by God. He had superhuman strength to fulfill the destiny that God chose for him. And the lesson here is you can and you will ruin God's calling on your life no matter how called you might be. Sexual sin will ruin your destiny. Let me say that a little bit stronger. Pornography, no matter what the culture says, will ruin your destiny. See, God still used Samson, didn't he? But he didn't use him how the story was supposed to end. And before Samson was a physical prisoner to the Philistines, he was a sexual slave to sexual sin crazy, isn't it? Well, I hope that answers your question, Christopher. You're listening to the Dustin Daniel Show. The Dustin Daniels Radio Show is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information with regard to the subject matter covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged in rendering counseling advice for your personal situation. If you need further help, we encourage you to seek the services of a Christ-based counseling professional. For more information on the radio show, visit DustinDanielsRadio.com.